Remember when we showed off the GPD Win, a super tiny but full-fledged Windows computer? Well, guess what? There's a sequel! And it's in a black and gold box and it comes out like this. Look, people like unboxings, right? Look at this thing. It's bigger, faster, and better in every possible way. Let's check it out. All right, so now that our Windows update is done, let's take a closer look at this guy. We've got some kind of rubberized grips on the side here and here so that you don't lose your grip. We've got a cooling fan, um, got kind of a black and gray aesthetic, and then we can just, I guess, open it up and get started. So right out of the box, like spec-wise, this thing is really impressive. The display is a six inch Gorilla Glass topped HIPS 10 point multi-touch display. So it's 1280 by 720, which is not amazing today, but is good enough for a device this size. The processor is a Core M3 7Y30. So what's cool about that is that that is not Atom based. That's a 15 watt KB Lake that runs one gigahertz base, 2.6 gigahertz boost, it's got two cores and it's hyper-threaded. It's running Intel HD Graphics 615, so not the most capable. We'll look at it a little closer later. Eight gigs of LPDDR3 RAM. It's got, you can actually see it here on the bottom, support for up to a 42 millimeter M.2, though it should be noted it runs AHCI, not NVMe. It's got dual band AC Wi-Fi, so I'd like to see how it handles something like Steam and home streaming. And packed into this, you can see it's quite thick. It's got two 4,900 milliamp hour batteries for up to six to eight hours of battery life. I'm really impressed with the IO too, just like I was last time around. So here, come, come have a look at this. So you've got your USB Type-C, that handles charging duties, and from our testing, also handles outputting to like a USB-C dongle, so you could adapt it to HDMI or an SD slot or whatever else you want. It's got a headphone jack. Whoa! It's got a USB 3 type A port. It's got a micro SD slot, and it's also got a micro HDMI output. So if you wanted to hook it up to a monitor or something, then you could totally do that. Right now, being totally honest, the speakers, aren't great, but apparently this is mostly a driver issue that they're already aware of. This is a pre-production sample. And I'm more concerned in the longer term with the inputs. The keyboard, right off the bat, way improved over the last generation. It doesn't have a ton of flex to it, and the tactile click of the keys, like, actually feels pretty good. Like, it's not like I'd type on it all day or anything, but way better than I expected. And just like last time, this little switch right here, super handy. So you change the joysticks from gamepad mode over to mouse mode, and all of a sudden, boom, there you go. You're moving your mouse cursor around. It's not, you know, a nipple and it's not a trackpad, but with a little bit of practice, you could definitely get really good with this thing. Joystick quality. Now that was really impressive. Apparently these are sourced from the Japanese company Alps, which I totally believe because they feel really good, like, like, like almost DS grade good. And as for the shoulder buttons, hear that? These are nice clicky buttons on R2, R1, and R3. Now it should be noted that these were a little hard to distinguish, especially at first from each other while gaming, but I do think it's something that you might get used to. Uh, something that would take a little longer to get used to is the weight. This thing is a touch heavy. It's about 460 grams. And making matters worse, the screen tilt is like just a little bit too far this way, then all the way this way. So I can't quite find myself in that perfect, comfortable in-between. It'll kind of snap out like that. But uh, okay, enough talk about hypotheticals. Let's, uh, let's fire up some games. One thing that's really nice right out of the gate on a device like this with Steam in-home streaming is if you have to make any configuration changes or if you run into any issues with it in general, which let's face it, they're a thing, it's a lot easier to fix them and make any adjustments on a full-fledged computer than with um, you know, something like a Shield Portable, which as you guys probably know, I'm a big fan of. 
This is basically what it looks like running a game elsewhere on the network over Wi-Fi. So check this out. See those tips right there? Controller disconnected, spacebar okay. Boom, we're in PC mode, hold E to drain Urix for health. Switch to gamepad mode and boom. It's working again already and all the prompts will change again so that we won't make any mistakes in terms of our control scheme. Check that out, B to drop. So the idea here is that over your home network using Steam or even over the internet, assuming your connection's good enough, using a service like Parsec, if you have a powerful enough machine somewhere, you can play full quality games even though the GPU on this thing really is not nearly powerful enough to run games like <laughs> Shadow of War. So how bad, you might ask, running things natively? Well, integrated graphics are still what they are, so here I've got a Steam library running off of this external one terabyte drive. So I've got a bunch of different games installed, and you're gonna see here that even in a fairly uh, indie game, not super demanding like Gang Beasts, we're seeing occasional stutters. And this is running at 720p. Actually, not even. Apparently, we're running with pillar boxes for some reason. Like, to be clear, it's not fair to expect Deus Ex Mankind Divided to run well. Uh, you know, even, <laughs> even at 720p, hold on, I, I got this guy, I got this guy, uh, on all low settings. But as long as you're just looking at kind of older games and you don't expect to be getting a smooth 60 or a 120 frames per second, not that that would matter, it's a 60 hertz display, it's not the worst thing ever. Though I'd personally definitely prefer to stream off something else if I'm running something demanding. Emulation, on the other hand, is the Win 2's wheelhouse. So check this out. This is Star Fox Assault running on a GameCube emulator without any problems, 60 FPS, at the original resolution, so that's at 480. Less demanding titles can actually run enhanced at GPD's native 720p resolution, and it goes pretty much without saying that it works really well for SNES, N64, PSX via RetroArch, but we were actually pretty surprised to see that it works reasonably well with PlayStation 2 games even at original resolution again though. Now, we did see more than the occasional slowdown in Grand Theft Auto, for example, but again, in less demanding games, this shouldn't be as much of a problem, and input lag overall was basically negligible. Okay, so what you're probably wondering at this point, sorry, can I actually take that from you? Enough Grand Theft Auto at work. What you're probably wondering at this point is how much does one of these cost? Well, like its predecessor, the Win 2 is pretty pricey. So it's $600 while it's running on its, uh, I don't remember which crowdfunding campaign site it is, but while it's running its crowdfunding campaign and then 700 after that. But it's got a lot of versatility and the fact that there is a second one means that there's clearly a market for these devices out there because the first one wasn't exactly cheap either. Speaking of things that uh, there's definitely a market for, Tunnel Bear is the simple VPN for folks that don't want to fool around with a bunch of complex settings in order to make their internet browsing more private and secure. Not to mention get the ability to access services that are geo-restricted or otherwise not available in their region. With Tunnel Bear turned on, your connection is secured and your online activity is kept private from your internet provider, advertisers, or anyone looking to track you or profit from your data. Tunnel Bear has a top-rated privacy policy and does not log your activity, so try it for free with no credit card required at tunnelbear.com. LTT. We're going to have that linked below. So thanks for watching, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it's awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured. I actually don't know if we have a link yet. Maybe by the time the video goes up, we will. At the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts, like the one that I'm wearing under this one that you can't get anymore, as well as our community forum, which you should totally join.